And, it's, and you know what? Uh, Dr. King did the same thing. George Washington did the same thing. And what I was hearing today, Gerald Ford did something very similar. So it's a part of leadership. It's a part of the decision-making process. I mean, are you going to try to persuade someone? And once you do that, they'll go do it themselves. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Are you going to issue an order and worry that they may or may not do it? Lincoln issued very few direct presidential orders. It's very hard to find them, actually. Yeah? Um, it can be made uh, the case today that there a certain amount of success a presidential candidate experiences due to how he does in a debate. How would you say Mr. Lincoln would have done in a presidential debate? Well, in about a month, you're going to find out with the Lincoln-Douglas debates, right? Um, and you read the Lincoln-Douglas debates, and it's pretty amazing what he said extemporaneously. I mean, he was brilliant. And um, um, I think, you know, it's hard to tell, you know, because it, everything's on television now and you have to be real careful and everything is, especially as in a presidential debate. Um, but, but Lincoln was, was a brilliant debater. He had a very quick mind. He was bright. He told lots of stories. He was colorful. You know, I think he was likable. I mean, people said back then that he, this guy has charisma. And uh, he was just a natural, likable type person. So I personally think he would have adapted quite well. Uh, he wasn't very good looking, by his own admission. Yeah. Kramer, right? You know. And um, but he used to. He took advantage. He, he would use that. He would. It was, his appearance was a joke. He would tell stories and make fun of himself. And some of the stories are hilarious. You know. It's, you don't want me to tell one. Yeah. No, I. Well, I'll tell you what my favorite one is it. <laughs> Lincoln said, you know, I was at a train station one time and I went up to this guy with my shotgun and I pointed the shotgun at him and I said, prepare to die. And the guy says, what? Well, who are you? He said, I'm Abraham Lincoln. He said, my mother told me if I ever found anybody else that was uglier than I am, that I was to kill him on the spot. <laughs> and the man said, he said, Lincoln, if I'm uglier than you are, then blaze away. <laughs> And I don't think that answered your question, but it was a funny story. <laughs> this time is for you, by the way. You know, they've kind of built it in for you all to ask whatever comments or questions you might have. Well, much has been made in recent times about Lincoln's depression, his struggle with suffering, and how he was able to, to channel that suffering and his struggles into something much nobler than just self-indulgence or giving up. Comment on that? It's amazing to me that Lincoln actually suffered from depression at an early age and that he overcame it by the force of his own will. And uh, you can only imagine what he went through when he was uh, president of the United States. You know, not only the Civil War and the many boys he sent into battle and the amount of people that died uh, and his own son died uh, when he was president, his 11-year-old son. Um, it's just unbelievable, and I, I think that I think he had a very deep faith. A lot of people would question his faith, and and when actually Mary Todd was questioned, she said, "No, he's the most he's the most godly man I know," and I think faith had a lot to do with that. And I also think that his belief that he had to preserve the Union propelled him forward. And um, it's it's an unbelievable story, really. Isn't it amazing that? A man like Lincoln could suffer from depression and still achieve what he achieved. It's a, it's a mystery to me, but it's, to me it's one of the most remarkable things about him. This lady had a question here. Who sculpted the statue? What's his name? It was a French... I don't know. All right, so I'm 0 for 1 on the questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew that at one time. I just. Who? Daniel Chester French. Okay, good. All right. I'm going to write that down and I'll have it on the next time somebody asks me that question. Yes? Another question about health. Um, I think Lincoln was very sensitive to the health. What about this Marfan syndrome? You know, um, so many different doctors have looked at Lincoln. Mar Marfan syndrome is, is a, um, it, 
It's a, it's a, it's a symptom of a, of a heart condition. And, excuse me? The whole body, connective tissue. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, but I know that, that a uh, physician saw Lincoln's foot during the, when he was, um, when he was, had a picture taken and his foot was, was shaking, you know, it was blurry. And so this physician said, I think he had Marfan syndrome, which was whatever, which had to do with his heart and caused him, as I understand it, to be kind of gawky and long and thin. And uh, I don't know if it's true or not. Yes, sir. It's interesting to play the what if game, but what do you think, had he survived and not been assassinated, what would have happened? I think that. Um, I think, and I am not a trained historian, but I think most historians agree that it would have been much better for the South if Lincoln had survived and not been killed. I think that he had already made it known that he was uh, going to let him up easy. He uh, rejected the Wade Davis bill, which would have required a 50% swearing to allegiance to allow the state back in the Union. He said, no, that's too much. Let's make it 10%. And that became his... Uh, Oath of Allegiance of December the 8th, 1863. Um, I think uh, Reconstruction would have gone a lot smoother. Uh, I think he had a, I think a lot of people in the South, in the Confederacy, came to regard him more positively. Not everybody, of course, but um, I think it was, a, it was a tragedy for the Confederacy as well as, as the Union for, you know, for that to happen, so. Gentlemen behind. This may be no more than trivia, but you mentioned the position of his hands on that, in that uh, statue. I was told by someone you know, that <laughs> the position of his left hand is an A in, in American Sign Language. Hmm. And that, the way he has his right hand, is an L. The sculptor's <laughs> actually got to make him <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard a ranger say that, but a, a student at Gallaudet University in Washington said that to me. So I don't know if there's anything in history about that, Bill, but uh, maybe a historian could tell you, but I actually don't know if the actual thing about the sculpture of the hands to symbolize was true or not either. I have not been able to verify either one of those things. I'll come to you in a minute here. This gentleman back here. You said that Lincoln and uh, Andrew Johnson ran on the Union ticket. Was that a popular thing to do politically? Were the party dynamics the same they were today? I don't think so. I, <laughs> you know, I think that that uh, the I think they went along with Lincoln because Lincoln was the guy. He had preserved the Union, and they were going to do about whatever he wanted. And look what happened when he was killed. You know, what did they do to Andrew Johnson? They impeached him. And he, one vote saved him from being thrown out of office. I think a lot of that had to do with the political nature of, of the appointment. And Lincoln wasn't around to save Andrew Johnson. So I think, I think that was a dramatic thing that Lincoln did. I, I didn't realize until I started studying. I, you know, did you ever think, I mean, really, I mean, that, didn't you think that Andrew Johnson was a Republican? That's what I thought, you know, until I, re, I, I learned about it. And I thought, wow, that's, that's remarkable. Yes. Oh, what did he like to do for fun, and did he like to read? Oh, yeah, he was a big reader. He was a huge reader. Shakespeare, the Bible. Um, his, his quotes, his speeches are filled, you know, his early speeches, you know, uh, quotes from Scripture. He loved Shakespeare. He loved to go to the theater and, and watch Shakespearean plays. He said it was kind of a, uh, he could quote Shakespeare amazingly, and, and, um, so I think reading was a big thing for him. He also used to take trips up to get out of the White House. He would go up to the soldier's home, about three or four miles away, and uh, spend time up there reading and, and meeting with people, just you know, getting out of the White House as much as he could. And uh, there are lots of stories about Lincoln. Uh, you know, He loved children, and he liked to play with Tad, his younger son, and the stories about younger friends bringing over their kids uh, at the soldier's home or him going someplace where there were kids and he would, they would find him out running around with the kids in the field, you know, to kind of let off steam and stuff like that, so. 